invite uh, Ms. Sangeeta Shankaran Sumesh uh, to speak on what the finance, let your profits enhance. This is a topic she is going to speak on. And Ms. Sangeeta contributes as a business coach by enabling high performance and enhancing financial growth. As a founder and CEO of uh, Gaintash Tick, Sangeeta is on a mission to enable, empower, and elevate businesses with a purpose to serve entrepreneurs, leaders, and teams to sign, shine and succeed. She br brings along rich corporate experience of 25 years with multinationals, and her latest uh, position was as the executive director and chief financial officer of Dun & Bradstreet Technologies. Sangeeta is a chartered accountant, management accountant, and completed executive education from Harvard Business School. She is a high-performance business coach from the International Coaching Federation, a TEDx speaker, and a best-selling author also. Now, over to you, Ms. Sangeeta. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, a pleasure to be here and, you know, to be addressing the uh, MSMEs here during this challenging things, I would say. So, like we know, you know, I say finance is the backbone of any business, however big, however small. And exactly like how Mr. Ramanan said, you know, you need to take charge of your finances so that you can manage your business better. And then you can, you will know what exactly you need to do because then you can take the right financial decisions. So today I thought, you know, considering the current times we are in, I will structure my talk through what MSMEs can actually do, where they need to focus to see how they can grow their profits as well as uh, how they can manage the cash flow better because I do understand that right now cash is a big constraint like we know you know cash is king so I say that cash is like oxygen to you know how we need oxygen to breathe that's how cash is for businesses and therefore my today's talk I thought I would uh, revolve it around these two factors of profits as well as the cash flow. So that's why I have titled my talk as what the finance, because you need to know finance. You need to understand, have the basic understanding. You don't have to be an expert, but once you know how finance functions for a business, then I think it will open up a lot more uh, stuff for you. So some of these points that I'm going to present to you today, they are from my books, what the finance or where's the moolah. So as we go through, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions or any doubts that you may have. So before I get started, I'd like to tell you that I'm an acronym person. You know, giving acronyms makes it easier for you. You know, the recall value is higher and any questions, any doubts, you know, you will be able to answer them yourself. So before we get started, you know, I'm sure all of you have heard of CSR. When I say CSR, many people think it is corporate social responsibility. But well, I'm here to talk about profits, right? So you're probably wondering what's the connect between CSR and the profits. So my friends, I'm going to talk to you about the financial CSR. So what is the financial CSR is nothing but C for your cash management, S for your spend management, and R is for your revenue management. Right. So if you focus on these three areas, which is your cash, your spend and revenue, then your business can do a lot better because like they say, where your uh, energy flows, your attention goes. So see that, you know, you're able to give your attention on these three areas of cash, spend and revenue. So if you were to put it into a matrix as a three by three matrix, so like we know the vertical rows stands for CSR. What do the horizontal rows stand for? During these times, again, you know, what uh, is the best way to keep ourselves protected? The PPE kit, right? So remember PPE as another acronym. So which is what it stands for? It's nothing but P for the principle. What are the principles that you have? The values, the strategies that you want to adopt for your CSR. And then comes your processes. What are the processes in place? to manage your CSR and E stands for the efficiency. How is it that you will be able to derive efficiencies from your CSR because that's when your business is going to be uh, performing at its peak potential. 
right? So are we together? We have the CSR and the PPE, which is the uh, principal processes and efficiencies. So before I proceed further, oh, sure, sure. Let's take a small pause and share a little real life story here with you. So there was this lady who was working in the corporate for 30 plus years, and she had a long dream of herself. You know, she used to, she was an excellent cook and she always dreamt of starting her own restaurant, right? So after working for 30 years, she thought it was time that she sets up her own business and therefore she put in all the savings, so her hard earned savings of all these years and started a, a wonderful, beautiful restaurant in the heart of the city in a mall. This was of course pre pandemic time. So. The restaurant was set up. She had celebrities who came and uh, inaugurated it. You know, she hired the best chefs in town and everything was very lavish. Needless to say, there was no control on her cash and she wanted to really grow in the business and therefore she went ahead and took extra loans as well. So she put in all her savings and then on top of that, there were a lot of loans and there was no control on the cash. So like we know, Come March 2020, the pandemic hit us. There was lockdown and since it was a restaurant business for quite some time, it was shut down and she had huge loans to pay. Now she's in a fix. She doesn't know how to go about, you know, repaying her loans because she has invested all her savings and therefore left with no choice after about six, eight months after the pandemic struck and the lockdown was there, she had to shut shop. Now, on hindsight, what did she realize? She realized that she had put in all the savings. There was absolutely no controls in place. She did not have a clue about her liquidity position. She just went ahead, took the loans, thinking that, you know, the business will start to flourish because, you know, everything was really nice. It was plush. She sort of the heart of the city. It was had very good chefs, so on and so forth. So she actually expected the business to become a roaring success. And unfortunately, these were things that were not beyond our control. And now she realizes that, you know, if from the beginning, if she was able to take very good control on her cash and her expenses and stuff like that, the business would have been in a much better position. So what can we learn from this? And what is it that you can apply in your business? So if you were to look at cash, right? What is your strategy, right? What are your strategies for your liquidity? Do you know your liquidity position? What is your working capital requirement, right? What are the measures that you can take to ensure your liquidity is good? Similarly, the processes. How often do you monitor your cash situation? Do you know what is the amount of money that is left with you in the bank at any point in time? Are you keeping a close tab on what the movement of money? And similarly, if you want your cash to work efficiently for your business, it's always good to forecast, you know, prepare a cash budget. Look how your money inflow and outflow is going to be looking forward. Because by doing this, it gives you a lot better visibility on how the business should be structured. What are the decisions that you need to take? You know, do you, does it mean you will have to adjust some of the expenses and some of the payouts? Or, you know, when is it that you need to invest probably in some equipment or whatever is good for the business? And therefore, it becomes very essential for you. And that's why I keep insisting on the cash. So do focus on your liquidity position, the monitor it often and ensure for maximum efficiency, you are able to forecast your cash requirements based on the current visibility levels that you may have. So let's again take a pause and look at another real life story. This is about a client of mine, right? So we were going to have our coaching conversation and this particular client had was from a non tech background and he was a fairly new entrepreneur. And of course, like most entrepreneurs, he wanted to control his costs and, you know, didn't want to spend too much. And therefore what he had done, he invested a lot of his time and effort in learning how to build a website. So he learned by himself and he built a beautiful website for his business. And why did he do this? Because he didn't want to outsource building the website to somebody else. Of course, while he had done an amazing job, that particular day 
our coaching conversation was focused on how he was going to enhance his revenue. So before our coaching conversation started, he told me about the website and how beautiful and everything. So I did appreciate him for those efforts. And then what happened? We started discussing about his revenues. So he said he's got a lot of potential customers in the pipeline and he was uh, you know, very sure that most of these leads that he had would get converted as his customers. But what was coming in his way? The fact was he did not have sufficient time to catch up with them, right? And he said, you know, if I were to get to meet them even online and then, you know, convince them and speak to them about my products, I'm sure I'll have a lot of people who will be signing up for it and therefore my revenue would grow. So being a business coach, to me, these were two striking things. I said, listen, one side you're saying you do not have the time to do it. But on the other side, I know you've spent a considerable amount of time in building your website. So this was something contradictory. So I just asked him, I said, have you spent that amount of time in meeting your prospective customers? How would that have resulted for your business? And that was an aha moment for him because it opened his eyes. He said, yes, you know, had I met my prospective customers and spoken to them, I'm sure a lot of them would have signed up and that would mean my revenue would have grown much more than me saving these potential costs. So my friends, the reason I'm sharing this little example is why we always want to cut down our costs, which is great too. I would highly recommend you, urge you to apply financial prudence as well, right? So for you to be managing your spends very efficiently and effectively, the first important thing is financial prudence. So ensure you're applying prudence in whatever financial decisions that you're taking and don't just look at it as just cutting the cost. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish. So apply prudence before you make any particular spend. In fact, for anything to do with finance, I think prudence is something very used, critical. And of course, on the processes, you know, what are the processes that you have? What sort of controls are in place within the business so that you don't really have to be involved in each and every aspect? You know, if you have set proper controls and, you know, delegation in place, then probably it makes your life a lot more easier. And of course, for the business spends to be very efficient, right? I always urge people to look at the returns. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard of ROI, which is return on investment, but what I call is the ROE, which is return on expense. While it does sound contradictory to expect a return from an expense, it is just something that you need to apply similar to your ROI, which is return on investments. So basically you just need to take a call to say whatever amount that you're spending, how is it benefiting your business? right? It could be a tangible benefit. It could be an intangible benefit. But if you were to take that moment's pause and check how it's actually helping your business, then it would give you proper clarity to see that, you know, if it's the right sort of spend that you need to be spending and incurring for your business, right? So the three things on the spend, the PPE of the spend is the prudence, the sort of controls that you have and the kind of returns that your business will be getting by incurring a particular spend. From here, let's move on to another little story. Again, a real life incident. So this story is about uh, an entrepreneur who was actually successful about five plus years. Although the person was successful, the person was having a lot of cash flow issues. And, you know, the easy way out, the entrepreneur thought was to just get some investor to invest in the business so that the cash flow issues would be resolved. So when we had this discussion, she wanted my inputs as a business coach. So when she explained everything to me, there was something that was glaring. Without addressing the root cause, right? There's no point getting in an investor just to temporarily plug your cash flow issues. So when I deep dived into our coaching conversation, I realized a few things. And one of this that was leading to this particular cash crunch was the revenue model. The revenue model of this particular business was not really structured in a 
the best manner that was helping the business to grow. So at one point, this particular vertical of the business started sucking money and pulling down the other verticals of the business. And therefore, this entrepreneur realized that the revenue model needs to change, right? And only then it's going to help the business to grow further. And it will also help in plugging the working capital leakages that we're having. So this is something I call the fake state syndrome, you know, wherein the entrepreneur thinks by getting an investor into the business, all the cash issues, the profits and everything is going to get resolved. While it could, I would urge you to look at it and, you know, plug the root cause because once the root cause is fixed, then everything else is going to fall into place. So know what is really happening in your business. So if you were to look at the PPE of the revenue, it is your pricing. Your product or service must be priced right. It shouldn't be obviously too high or too low if you're trying to, you know, stabilize yourself in within your customers. Unless you're a premium brand, it's a different story, but your pricing needs to be right. You have to have a right kind of pricing strategy. And then the processes, you know, what sort of processes are in place? Are you simple things like, are you ensuring that the invoice is being raised to the customer on time? Because if there is a delay, that means your working capital is delayed, or if there are any revenue leakages in your processes, then of course the business suffers. So therefore ensure the timing is also good. And how do you ensure the um, efficiency is at its peak is through the segmental, you know, ensure that you are monitoring the financial performance of each segment of the business. It could mean different product wise or service wise, so on and so forth, so that you get a much better picture and clarity on how the revenue is functioning. So if I were to summarize, you know, the CSR and the PPE, this is how it looks. So the cash again, let me uh, tell you, you need to focus on the liquidity, the monitoring and the forecasting of your cash requirements. On the spend, apply financial prudence, ensure there is sufficient controls and measure the kind of returns your business would be getting. And on the revenue, ensure the pricing is right, the timing is you know, in line with the business expectations. It could also mean the credit that has been given to your customers. And of course, look at it from a segment wise, you know, each segment where to be an independent business unit, how does it function? So to conclude my friends, here's something that I call the seven sins of cash management, right? So what are they? First sin is not anticipating your cash inflow and your cash outflow. If you do not know what your requirements are, what is the amount of money that's coming in? What is the amount of money that's going out? Of course, it doesn't help your business. So avoid this. The second sin is being passive and not following up on the amounts that are due. Because, you know, I've noticed many entrepreneurs focus so much on the business operations and other aspects such as marketing or, um, the, you know, uh, any other stuff. But when it comes to finance, there's a lag because I know many people consider finance to be boring, challenging, and they say it's not my cup of tea, but hey, you need to know finances or, you know, you must be in a position uh, to manage the finances better because that's what is going to help you to grow. So ensure that you are collecting the monies due to you within the uh, allotted credit period that you have with your customers. So that's the second sin. The third sin is what I told you, you know, borrowing to fix your cash flow issues and not addressing the root cause. This is what I call the fate state syndrome. So ensure you do not fall a trap to this third sin. What is the fourth sin? Fourth sin is being not being aware of the cash runway of the business. What is the cash runway? You know, how long can your business survive if you do not get any further money, right? So that is your cash runway. And the cash runway suddenly rose to a lot of prominence, especially after the pandemic struck us because many businesses were greatly affected. So you need to be aware of your cash runway and plan your business accordingly. The fifth sin is not monitoring the movement of funds. You know, what is the amount of money that's coming in? What is the amount of money that's going out? Because if there are any leakages or, you know, any unknown debits into your account, for instance, it could be even by the bank. Sometimes it could even be an error. So stuff like that, you need to be monitoring closely the movement of your money in and money out. The sixth sin is not utilizing the cash that you have 
to generate more cash, right? So supposing you are, uh, you know, flush in your cash, you have a lot of cash for you and you know it's going to be the way uh, probably for the next few months. So, you know, it may be wise for you to invest it into a liquid fund, fixed deposit, whatever, so that you're able to generate that little extra cash for your business because, of course, it's going to do good to your business. So that is the sixth sin. And the seventh sin, I say, is not creating cash reserves. Now, of course, these times have always, uh, you know, really, I think, drilled a lot into us to say the importance of having cash reserves because with cash reserves, you could probably help you during any emergencies, any unforeseen circumstances, or even times like these lockdowns. So in fact, even the pre-pandemic times in my talks, I always used to say the importance of having reserves, and now it has just kind of emphasized on this. So ensure you have sufficient cash reserves that can help your business. It could be three months, it could be six months, whatever it is, but giving that gives you some amount of comfort and amount of leeway for you to manage your business in a much better way. So these are the seven sins which I told you and you know ensure you don't fall a prey to this and of course most of these what I shared with you in my talk today they are from my book Where's the Moolah? Uh, you know it's a financial growth hacking for business profitability and of course better cash flow management and uh, it has some great financial insights from very successful entrepreneurs as well as senior corporate leader. So if you would like to read and, you know, this would definitely help because this book pivots on finance. It has taken into account uh, the different functions of the business and how each function can contribute for better profitability. And of course, my other books are Get High, How to Coach Yourself for High Performance in Your Work and What the Finance is the National Bestseller. It tells you practical approach on what the challenges are and what the solutions that you can apply for better business profitability. And yes, these are all available on Amazon, both hard and soft copy. I would be happy to connect with you all in, and my social media handles are the gain enabler. I have my YouTube channel. I keep sharing a lot of stuff on finance, high performance and leadership. So feel free to subscribe and reach out to me on LinkedIn, Insta, anything. And with that, I would like to conclude my talk and I am happy to take any questions probably after the uh, other speaker. Thank you, Sangeeta. Very enthusiastic uh, speech. A lot of uh, takeaways here yeah? with a lot of stories. So we remember uh, what we heard. Yeah? And uh, uh, acronyms always useful. Yes. The CSR and PPE. I think uh, we will not forget for some time <laughs> if we practice forever. And the seven sins of cash flow management. I think uh, the most uh, important, all of us find it uh, happening in our day to day life in the business. Like you say, we are just not uh, CEOs until we know finance. Absolutely. Finance is one area without uh, which we can't claim ourselves to be a CEO. Mm -hmm.